and welcome back to part two of setting up your open source uh, learning management system in the cloud. Um, we're going to be setting up Moodle in um, in Amazon Web Services. Um, this has uh, got a quite a few different advantages. Uh, one is uh, it's very uh, very easy to set up and very flexible, uh, and it also lets you um, set up and scale out as necessary. Um, First thing you would need to do is actually just go out to the Amazon um, uh, Web Services uh, site. Uh, you can get there by going to aws.amazon.com. The other option, if you're viewing this on the website, is you could go to onlearningpoint.com uh, forward slash aws, and that'll take you in here as well. Um, I'm already signed in here, um, and once you sign up, uh, and you sign in, this is the, the screen that you're going to see. Uh, if you do have an Amazon account already, you could use that same Amazon account. Um, there is a lot of different options in here, Direct Connect, uh, EC2, and Elastic uh, MapReduce. Uh, we're not really concerned uh, with most of the items in here. The really one that we're going to focus in on is the EC2, which is the virtual server uh, part. Um, click on it just to, to go right into it. Uh, and this will bring you into the uh, EC2 console, and this is where you control um, all the uh, the instances that are running. So what is an instance, and, and why do they call it an instance? Um, the way I like to think of it is that a person, there's a lot of different type, types of people, uh, but there's only one instance of you. And so what we're doing is we're basically creating an instance of a server. Um, it's just a very uh, IT-heavy uh Word that some people may may not uh, be completely clear on. Uh, the first thing you want to do when you uh, log in here is you want to create a key pair. This is a, a very important requirement. If you don't do this, uh, you will not be able to access the server uh, using WinSCP or uh, PuTTY later on. And so I've already created one here, but let me just show you how you would create one. And I'm going to create a new one. And I'm just going to call it 22, or you could call it something more descriptive. Uh, but what, what is important here is that you download and save this PEM file. Uh, one of the problems I ran into is that I tried to save this PEM file right on my desktop, and it didn't work. I, I had a lot of trouble with it. And so as a result, uh, what I would recommend is uh, saving it directly onto the C drive in a subfolder with, with no spaces in it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Um, if it was a PuTTY issue or a WinSCP issue, but um, that did cause quite a bit of problems for me. Uh, it's created and it's been uh, downloaded. So now uh, we're ready to set up the instance. So to actually set up the instance, we're going to go into the instances area. And uh, this is going to load the, uh, the other instances. Uh, I did go through this one time uh, before. I wasn't completely happy with the way it turned out, so uh, we're doing it again, and so that's why you see that this instance is in here. Um, you can see that's also it's terminated, so I've actually stopped it. We right-click on it. Uh, we can't start it. We can't do anything with it. So we need to. Its life has been is over as it knows it. Uh, we're going to click on Launch Instance. Uh, this is where we can really use uh, some of the um, the built-in images uh, that are built into the uh, the marketplace. If you use the the classic wizard here. It would just give you a bare bones server, and at some point we'll set one of those up from scratch as well. Um, but for today, and the sake of simplicity, we're going to use the the marketplace. If you click there, you can just search for Moodle, and uh, what'll happen is it'll give us uh, a whole bunch of results here and servers that uh, can be set up. Uh, this one, uh, and you can see there's a different cost associated with each of the different ones. This one is five dollars a month plus two cents, uh, plus 35 cents an hour. So this is going to be a pretty expensive machine, probably better for higher end. Uh, we're going to go for one, since this is just testing purposes, and uh, I'm familiar with this one. We're going to go with uh, this one by, by Pitnami. Um, it seems uh, they seem to have done a nice job with it, so we're going to pick that one. Uh, the next item that we need to do is figure out where we want to locate the server. We have uh, different options for different regions. 
if your uh, students are in um, Ireland, for instance, then you would want to pick the one in Ireland. Uh, you can also see the costs associated with each of the, um, the different servers as well. Um, the next area is what version of the software. Um, I guess I'm not sure if we could change this. Oh, yeah, I guess we could. Um, it's probably a good practice unless there's a reason for your software to be an older version. You would just usually want to go with the, the latest one. Um, small, you can see, will give us an estimated of $57 per month. Um, at seven at uh, 24 hours uh, a day, seven days a week. Obviously, if you run it less, it will be uh, less money. Uh, in this case, we're going to go with the micro uh, instance. Uh, the micro instance has less resources associated with it, uh, but that's okay because um, I've been running the micro instance with another uh, server, and it, things seem to run just fine uh, with it uh, set up that way. One other area I want to point out is that it's going to be using uh, which key pair is it going to be using? So I'm just going to pick the uh, the one that I, I originally created. Um, this is important because it binds that key pair with your server, and you need to make sure that you use that key pair when accessing the server. So the next thing we'll be able to do is we'll see that the uh, estimate for the tiny is going to be fifteen dollars. We'll click on the one one. Uh, click and so now what it's actually doing is it's actually cr taking the image the server image and it's uh, copying it to a, uh, a server cluster uh, in uh, Virginia and Because uh, that's the area that we uh, that we picked uh, Somewhere on the East Coast. It does say Virginia. So who knows exactly where it's going to end up, but um So this is just going to run for a couple minutes. It's it's copying those files and then setting up uh, a temporary uh, DNS so uh, we can be able to access the server and um, uh, there we go and now it's all set so now what we'll need to do is just go back into our management console and this is the uh, this is that same area that we were in uh, before Um, a couple things that we're going to need to do with it now is we're going to need to uh, start it up. And uh, you can see over on the right hand side that we have zero uh, running instances. So let's just go into there right now. And we do see that it's running. So uh, things are just uh, running maybe just uh, a little bit slow right now, and I'm kind of uh, rushing through it. Uh, but just give it a couple minutes, and it's going to be uh, up and running. So uh, if we were to click on this, we're going to get some additional information down at the bottom. And so what we want to do is we want to verify that this thing is actually up and running. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to grab its public uh, DNS name. And here it is. So let's just grab the copy of that. We're going to drop that into our uh, our browser. Whoops. And uh, if everything worked out correctly, uh, we'll see our Moodle page, uh, which we did not. Uh, let's just refresh that since uh, things are running just a little bit slow. Uh, I'm going to pause this uh, video for just a minute, let everything catch up. I think what was happening was uh, we were just running it a little bit too fast. What I did is I just went back into my instances. I did a refresh here. Uh, we can see that now the server is actually up and running and uh, no alarms and so forth. So now when we go to the, our page, uh, we should get, oh, there it is should get our uh, server up and running and if we click on access my application uh, we can go into the uh, the Moodle page itself um, hovering over it shows you that uh, it's this uh, temporary URL slash Moodle and so uh, here it is um, I don't remember exactly what the uh, default uh, login information is uh, you would need to access that using on the Bitnami uh, website uh, but I believe the user is Bitnami, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, once you've logged in, uh, we'll be able to uh, set up uh, set up your own ID, 
and um, actually start uh, delivering training. Um, the one other thing I did want to mention, once uh, that has been set up, uh, what you want to do is you will want to go back and assign an IP address to your instance. And, and the way you would do that is you would go in through your Elastic IPs here, and uh, you would just allocate a new address. And that'll, what that'll do is it'll give you a static IP address uh, that you would go into, that you would take into GoDaddy and then uh, assign a uh, DNS name, whatever your uh, particular uh, website URL needs to be, you would assign that into your um, in your GoDaddy DNS control panel. And uh, if you don't know how to do that, you can always call GoDaddy. And I'm sure they would be happy to show you how to do that. And the one other thing is if if you have the if you have the server just for uh, testing purposes, uh, there's there's really no reason for it to stay running and uh, uh, charge you two cents per hour. Um, I mean, two cents isn't much, and so it only runs $15 a month. Uh, but if it's for testing, then no reason to do that. Uh, so one way you could uh, one way you could stop it is to right-click on it, and then just choose uh, stop at the bottom here. And what this will do is it'll uh, do. You sure you want to stop it? And there it goes, and it's stopping. And now that server uh, is available. It's waiting for us to start up again, uh, but for right now, it's um, uh, it's going to be stopped and no longer charging. You. So uh, one of the neat things is uh, being able to dynamically size the servers as you need to get bigger and smaller. Uh, and then the other thing is you're able to create copies of uh, of your of your existing server, for example, and deploy that. Um, and then uh, start and stop servers uh, as you need it, as uh, directly from the console without having to worry about uh, any uh, issues with hardware. So uh, this this pretty much concludes the uh, the rapid uh, tour on how to set up uh, your Moodle in uh, in Amazon uh, Web Services. Uh, thank you for watching.